customer feedback is a really big part of what we do. One of the interesting things about um, what we built at United Effects is that really it's industry agnostic. It can help build software for ed tech as easily as it would for cybersecurity or for fintech. And the nuances of those use cases and how, how people interact with it will change. And then the other element of that is we ourselves. So we use our own technology to build um, upon for the features that we release into United Effects. Um, so in a very big way, we are our first customer. We are our biggest user. Um, everything in our product in terms of how uh, login, user authentication, access, how data, you know, analytics and streaming, how all of these APIs come together. All of that is built on our product. We did it. We built the foundation first, and then we did exactly what we're selling. We built on top of that. And so what's interesting about that is there are, there are elements of the experience that are absolutely, when we first designed it, our best guess based on our own understanding. And uh, there has been more than one occasion where we've designed something based on how we use it. And then we watch a user attempt to interact with the controls and they just can't make heads or tails of it. And, it, and a lot of it comes down to how we structure the data on the screen and how we sort of connect uh, the intent of the action. So as an example, I think like with permissions, we have a patent pending approach toward how the way that we even model permissions in our product. And so being authors of the patent and being authors of how that works together, our interpretation of an experience around it was very specific to the underlying technology of how it works, which as it turns out is a terrible way for people, just normal people who aren't familiar with the inner plumbing to interact with it. And so this was, I think, a particularly challenging uh, screen for us. I'm curious what you think, Josh, but I felt like we iterated a lot and a lot of it was just watching. I would do a demo and ask somebody to try it and they would try it and have no idea how it worked. And then we would tweak it and it got better. And we do this, you know, and we, eventually we've gotten to a version of it, which we think has been good and we'll keep testing that as well. And I think everything in our system, we do this with, uh, we have to, uh, this is how it's going to be usable. So as a designer who's and a designer who's built research operations and organizations, there's a lot of different methods for understanding how to improve a product. One of them that I love the most is just observing behavior. Uh, something that Bo mentioned, watching folks move their mouse around and click on something. And when they don't click the thing you were expecting, that's wonderful because then you have some questions for them. Hey, okay, what did you think would happen? What were you expecting? What did you expect that to be called? Uh, what were you thinking about before you moved your mouse over there? And then by asking those questions, we can understand relative what's what's the most common behavior that's expect users and how do we make sure the product aligns to that and i i love observing that we track um and honestly of course we, we track the behavior in the product to understand what's working and what's not failure and success points are and when optimize and it's especially to our window-based experience uh, based on what users are doing in the product our, our win experience is unique to our product versus others in the market. It's taking a look at how applications are built today and saying, yeah, okay, our product in a way that assembled the interactions of an actual operating system so that our product alone is a reflection of how this can scale because the product can scale as well. And, and because it's so unique though, there's a lot of experiences that are new maybe either from the sense of how an operating system works, but unique to users in the sense of how a product works. United Effects, I think, treats work-life balance as pragmatically as possible. Many of our founders have children and we all work from home and we all have lives that are popping in and out of our work discussions. I think you could hear Josh's kids in this conversation a few minutes ago and, and that's life for us. That's the background that is the background soundtrack for everything that we've been doing for the last two years. And I'll say that I, for one, welcome it. I think it's super important because speaking personally, I didn't start United Effects to build some sort of empire. I didn't do this because I wanted to be famous or anything. I think there were probably easier ways to become famous. I did this because I wanted something 
for my family. And I partnered with my partners because they wanted the same. And so if we're doing this for our families, for each other and, our, and for our families, then that has to be an important part of the day to day and of the mission itself. Um, I, I think it's just a matter of putting them first, understanding that they come up and knowing that yes, some days I might have to miss a barbecue because we have an important release or something like that. But other days I'm going to that barbecue and the team is going to know that's happening you know, and to be with my family. And I think, I hope that everybody knows the way that this works here at United Effects. I think that's the value that we've tried to push forward. I see a lot of debates online about, let's not call it work-life balance. Let's call it work-life integration, or let's call it something else. I, I heard this a million times, but my, my father was a, a trauma nurse and a coroner. And so the concept of how precious life is, well, that was just what I grew up with. The coroner never asked him how his day was. That being said, whenever I led an organization or line of business at an organization in the past, I would always sit my team down and I would say, hey, you only have one life and it's short. And if this doesn't count, if what we're doing right now doesn't matter and it doesn't count, and if you're not living what you feel is your best life now through this, then we have to figure out what needs to change. And for me, that, that is, that carries me a career. And I think it remains true at United Effects. But in the event, folks feel like they're languishing and they're not living their best life now. It doesn't matter how productive we are now. We are not going to be productive in the future because that is a leading indicator to our success.